Hello and welcome to another economics video. Today I'm talking about uh, consumer price index, also known as uh, inflation in our economy and how it was measured in uh, September 2017. So the report came out earlier this week and basically what it found was that inflation month over month increased by half of a percent and we'll talk a little bit more about where that adds up compared to others in just a minute. Year over year, that amount of all items increased by 2.2%. So if people ask what the inflation rate is right now, it is 2.2%. Now, food and energy are very volatile components of inflation. So the government will tend to strip those out and look at something called core CPI, essentially the stable elements of the economy and where that pricing is. And that was closer to flat in the month of September and year over year is only up 1.7 percent. So I want to first take a look at this is just the the headline number and at 0.5 percent on a monthly basis that is one of the higher readings of the last uh, 10 years. In fact we saw one reading in uh, early 2011, another in 2012, one in 2013 and one uh, around the first of this year 2017 to match that. So this really is the fifth or yeah excuse me fifth half percentage reading going back to 2009. So it, while it standing alone is not the most significant uh, it's something that is going to make the next inflation report much more important. On a year-over-year -year basis, the red line represents core, the blue line represents headline. After several months of declining inflation, uh, we've, we've definitely seen a pickup in the last couple of months. And I suspect that core is going to begin to creep up back towards that 2 and 2.1, uh, 2.2% 2 .2 level sooner rather than later as headline inflation, while it is less stable, energy and food prices have a, a big influence over the rest of core inflation in the economy. I want to share first food, which, uh, you know, surprisingly has seen a downward trend in pricing over the last few years. It is beginning to bounce back now, keeping in mind that, you know, you're really looking at a year-over-year -year comparison of this deflationary uh, period right now. So while you know, we're going to see a little bit higher inflation numbers with food over the next few months, probably in the one to one and a half percent range. It's actually going to be really critical first of the year spring to see what those numbers look like as it will be a year over year comparison of growing prices from last year versus shrinking prices. Energy, as we know in 2014, 2015, some of 16, we really had that deflationary period with energy. And then we saw the big surge back in late 16, early 17. It appears again as if we're in another inflationary trend with energy prices. Obviously, crude oil being the single largest factor of this CPI category, but, but still worth mentioning. Probably the two biggest drivers of core inflation right now are housing, which is just under 3%, and rent, which is still over 3%, and it's had that streak for a very long time, but now stands at 3.8%. So housing and rent right now in the United States uh, seem to be, for lack of a better term, the most scarce item, which is creating that, uh, that big price fluctuation. Medical care, which had a huge jump at the end of 2016, now is seeing a big decline in 2017, and right now we're at 1.6%. But again, this is 1.6% higher than the biggest price increase we had from a year ago. So it's not, uh, again, you know, in kind of giving people an understanding. While inflation is slowing down here, pricing is still ramping up over what it was a year ago. It'll be very interesting once again when we get into the middle of next year to see how uh, that pricing is compared to this, uh, you know, downtick time period. One of the reasons why I no longer own stock in automakers is that, you know, new vehicle CPI has really been lagging since late 2012 and right now it is in probably the largest deflationary push since the recession 
at minus 1%. Another area creating uh, headwinds in inflation is education, which you know used to have a 4 or 5% uh, inflationary year-over-year -year pricing now all the way down to 2.3 percent. It is, uh, you know, one of the lowest readings in a, in a very long time, and you know a lot of demographic data goes into this with college-age students being a smaller part of the population. So expect this area to come under uh, additional headwinds. Overall, and I may have said this earlier, but I do expect headline inflation to stay above 2% for the foreseeable future and that core CPI to tick up and over 2%. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.